<clears throat> Welcome to chapter 102 of what will probably go down as one of the widest podcasts of all time. Of all time. One of the widest episodes of Memoirs of a White Guy. Because ladies and gentlemen, I'm in Thailand. Your boy made it. I made it home. Finally. I, this is the first place I've ever been on the planet where I'm like, ah... It's good to be back. I've never been here before, but I just feel like I'm with my people, you know? I'm with a bunch of other Australians that are like, ah, good to be back. First time here? Yeah, mate. Fucking loving it. Yeah, sweet. Good to be home though. Yeah. It's just where my people originate from. All right. They don't, I mean, they don't actually come from here, but they come here and fucking ruin the place. And, uh, man, it's been great. Uh, <laughs> again, this is, this is going to be one of the widest episodes of the podcast, probably the widest. I'm not saying it's going to be the greatest. It'll go down as one of the uh, one of the mediocre eps, but one of the definitely the widest. Because um, I'm I'm in a hotel room right now uh, in Thailand. Uh, we're staying just outside of Phuket um, with Emily and of course my tambourine. Uh, if you didn't, if you're confused as to why I have a tambourine, then uh, you clearly don't follow me on Instagram. Ouch, I'm hurt. But uh, if you're not confused, then uh, yeah, you'll know that I was packing late, uh, late, late the night before I left because I was going absolutely balls deep in everything before I left trying to get shit done. Uh, I had a gig the night before. I didn't That last day before I left, I was trying to get so much stuff done before I went on a holiday that uh, I didn't eat for 11 hours. And I didn't realize until like the nine hour mark, I was at a gig and I was like, I'm really hungry. I feel sick. I want to throw up, but I haven't eaten. And then I was like, when was the last time I ate? Oh, breakfast. Oh, sick. Awesome. And then I was like to the bar people, I'm like, hey, do you guys do like dinner? And they're like, no, kitchen's closed. You should have eaten earlier. I'm like, yeah, sick. Awesome. Anyway, so I got home from the gig, hadn't packed, was leaving the next morning to Thailand. And uh, so obviously I chucked my Melbourne singlet in my suitcase because uh, I, w- I wanted to watch the D's over here. I'll get to that in a sec. Um, I put my a, a couple of tie-dyes in and some thongs. And I was like, fuck, I'm done. And then I was like, I feel like I'm missing something. Uh, so I was like, oh, toothbrush, yep, that need that. And then I was like, I'm still missing something. And I was scanning around my room and I was like, ah, oh, my tambourine. It would be a bit weird if I didn't pack my tambourine. So, uh... I did a quick Instagram poll, went like, hey guys, uh, should I pack the tambourine to Thailand? What about if they need percussion on the plane? Uh, and everyone's like, quick, who's got a tambourine? And I'm like, oh, lucky I bought it. You know what I mean? What about if that situation happens? So, lucky it didn't, and but I, I still did get out the tambourine on the plane anyway. Uh, much to people's uh, unenjoyment. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been super fun. I don't know where to start. I really don't know where to start. You know what? I'll start from the start. That is where most stories begin. And I hate stories that start. You guys know that. I hate movies that go six months earlier. This story just starts at the beginning. Actually, you know what? Now let's do it. Two days earlier. So I'm a, two days from I'm about to leave for Thailand. The reason why I'm telling you this is because I, I want to apologize for there being no podcast the last two weeks. Uh, this will be out Friday. Um, I'm recording this on Thursday. But I can't upload it now because I don't have a computer and stuff with me. So when I get back, uh, it'll be out. And then uh, then the, the, the podcast will go back to normal. There'll be another episode Monday. Anyway, sorry for not doing the podcast because I've been trying to smash out content for you all. I did two videos before I left in like three days. Uh, and I was had a bunch of meetings and stuff for the radio station. And um, yeah, it was hectic. Had a few gigs. It was just... It was, a, it was a nutty week. Anyway, uh, I'm here now. So, that was two days earlier. Cuts back. I'm, I'm going to the airport. I got my tambourine. I'm walking through customs, just jingling in. Just do it. That's how it sounds like whenever I walk anywhere in Thailand. You can hear me coming. I'm just... Oh, Luke's coming. <laughs> I've taken it everywhere with me. So, right, I'm at the airport. And uh, the first thing that happened on this trip, we almost missed our flight. Who, how? Only I could be that dumb. Only I could be that stupid where I'm like, yep, I booked this trip three months ago. Been, I mean, I didn't do a lot of planning, but you know, I'm here at the airport. Two hours, we were there at the airport. 
two and a half hours early, okay, than we needed to be, I think. So we were there real early. We're, we're getting like lunch, and then we're like, all right, on our boarding pass, it says meet at gate 12. Well, not meet, like board at gate 12. So I was like, sweet, let's go to gate 12 and hang out. And uh, we're sitting in gate 12, and at the airport, you get pretty bored, all right? There's no Wi Fi down at gate 12. So me and Emily, we started to play a game called Fuck Mary Kill. And you guys will probably be familiar with the game. If you're not, uh, it's this game where you like, usually you name like three celebrities. For example, Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, Wreck It Rolf. If we're doing a DreamWorks edition. And you go, Fuck Mary Kill. And obviously, there is a correct answer. Uh, you marry Shrek, you fuck the shit out of Poe, the Dragon Warrior, and you. Kill Wreck-It Ralph. Um, I do like Ralph, but out of the three, you know, you, it's, it's just business, all right? But uh, also, by the way, outside of that hypothetical, just a forewarning, if you guys ever get a chance in your life to fuck a dragon warrior, never turn that shit down, all right? That's one of my general rules, all right? You know what, the, you, <laughs> you know what I always say? Never, never turn down a chance to fuck a dragon warrior. Luke Kidgel, 2018. Um... <laughs> Anyway, so we're at the airport, right? So we were playing Fuck, Mary Kill with just celebrities, you know. I was like, oh, this is getting boring, you know. I was getting the yawns, all right. I started to get out the tambourine yawns. <laughs> right? And uh, I was like, okay, let's spice it up a little. So I came up with what I believe is one of my favorite games now. You play Fuck, Mary Kill, but with people sitting around you in the airport. Real humans, real... It's it. It literally, it's next level. It's a next level sport, right? So I'm going like, there's a guy who looks like Macklemore, right? And I, I was like, all right, would you rather fuck Macklemore, the 90 year old Asian woman in the wheelchair, or the 50 year old dad picking his nose and telling his kid to just watch Peppa Pig and shut up? And Emily's like, well, you'd have to. And then, here's the thing, there's, there was also a right answer there. I went with. Obviously, fuck the old woman in the wheelchair, all right? She, you, that, that's charity work. Um, marry the old guy picking his nose, because uh, if he's going to pick a winner, you know what I mean? He, if he has that kind of dedication to getting boogers out of his nose, he's going to be a damn good faithful husband. And you kill the guy who looks like Macklemore. Why? Because you're a 40-year-old dude who looks like Macklemore, and you deserve to die anyway. So I'm just doing the world a favor there. But man, it got spicy. It got to the point where we were picking out people less than a meter away from us and openly just going, would you fuck, marry, or kill him? I was like, and then Emma was like, you can't keep doing this. These people are a meter away from us. And I was like, mate, ask him. Like, what would he rather be fucked, married, or killed right now? I mean, he's in an airport. He'd probably rather die. <laughs> it's not rude. It's just spicy. It's spicy gameplay. So I'd recommend that. Fuck, marry, kill but with actual people in your area. You can play it at school, man. Play it with people in the class, all right? Maybe not. I mean, I probably shouldn't be encouraging that, but uh, if you get a chance, would highly recommend. It's a fun game. So, all right, we're sitting in gate 12, and there's not a lot of movement happening. No Jetstar. We're flying Jetstar over, because obviously it's me, all right? I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Jetstar Lord at this point, right? I, I'm almost a frequent flyer there. And, uh... So I was like, yep, direct flight to Jetstar, boom, you snap that up any day. And uh, there's not a lot of movement happening in the gate. And I was like, okay, this is fine. Uh, maybe they're just, maybe it's been delayed. So I look up at the board and I'm like, I can't see our flight on this board. And I was like, maybe they're running really late. But I was like, nah, they're still doing, you know, like, like there's still a lot of flights going and leaving. Okay. So we sit back down again and I was like, mm, maybe we should ask someone. And I was like, nah, nah, it says gate 12 in our boarding pass. They're not going to change the gate without telling us. So you'd think, literally gets to the time where it's like 10 minutes or 15 minutes after we're supposed to be boarding, right? And there's nothing happening. And I'm like, I think we're at the wrong gate. And she's like, Emma's like, yeah, I think we have to. <laughs> so we just fucking leg it out of this like terminal. And we're like looking up at the boards going, shit, 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 where is it? And then there's other people kind of doing the same. Because they've given us all boarding passes. Dude, the whole flight almost missed the flight. The, everyone on the plane almost missed the flight. There are literally like 50 people just legging it down like one of the aisles, like trying to weave in and out of the travelators. There was like a scene out of a movie. I felt like we were having a riot in the airport. And like all these people are just... And they're like, final boarding for Jetstar flight, GQ14. 
And everyone's like, what the fuck? You can't... And then we get to the gate, and they're like, oh, you guys are a bit late. And I'm like, you changed the gate. This is gate 16, not 12. I'm like, look at this. And I show my boarding pass. She's like, oh, that's funny that it printed out that. I'm like, no, it's not. Oh, look at all these people puffing and not laughing. Because they've had to fucking run 500 meters through an airport. They've had to kick over a pram that's waiting at Gloria Jeans to get their flight. All right? (laughs) No one's laughing. Oh, that's funny, isn't it? Is it? Do you find that funny? Do you find inconveniencing your customers funny, Jetstar? Because I don't. As a customer, was thoroughly unamused. Now, so we're on the flight, finally. So that, so what an eventful start to the trip. We've almost missed our flight, along with 50 other bogans who were still, like, punching, like, holes in their chest trying to get out the dark cough because they've all been fucking hammering it already. And, man, that flight was one of the... That was the longest flight I've ever been on. I haven't really been overseas that much, right? Like, I, I, like the, I think the other longest flight I've been on is, like, Melbourne to Darwin. Oh, no, no, Fiji was the longest one. Um... So I was like, yeah, this is like, this is like not a, you know, like, like not a short flight. And the caliber of people on that flight, whoo wee. I thought, I, like, sometimes I, I often gloat on this podcast. I'm like, oh, guys, I'm so white as I sit here currently wearing a rip-off New York Yankees cap. But anyway, that I bought in Thailand for $4. Uh, <laughs> but I was like, oh, God, I, I, I sometimes brag about it. I'm like, I'm so white. I don't even eat sushi because it's too culturally advanced for me. The people on this flight wouldn't even be able to pronounce sushi. Alright? There were people, like, this is what got me. People were like, in the in-flight entertainment, everyone, fucking everyone was watching Friends. And I realised how much of a, I never thought of that as like a Bogan TV show until I saw like 50 year old dudes with tats just chuckling at shit Monica says. And I was like, oh, this show is for bogans. And I never realized it. I'm like, this is why I really enjoy Friends. <laughs> and those other guys like listening to Triple M radio shows, uh, not Luke and Lewis, unfortunately, but uh, that, you know, they, they weren't listening to Triple M Modern Digital. They'll listen to like the hot breakfast on the flight on the way over. I'm like, mate, you have like. The Avengers, every movie that's out right now, and you're sitting there listening to Eddie Maguire and Luke Darcy, and and I'm like, respect. That that's exactly what I expect on a plane to Thailand. Good on him. And then, uh, so yeah, on that. Oh, guys, I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it at all. Something bad happened on the flight, guys. I like that. I, I, this podcast has been going for 12 minutes, and I, I'm so far in the story, I haven't even got to Thailand. I'm still on the plane. <laughs> Alright, something bad happened on the plane. I've never felt more alone, and I want you to know that it wasn't my first choice. It wasn't even my fifth choice. It was a necessary thing that had to be done. I did my first plane poo. And if anyone's ever done a plane poo before, they'll know me. They'll they'll know what I went through. Not only is it humiliating... And you're under pressure, it's stressful, it, you feel like you're holding all the other passengers up. There are four toilets in the plane for about 400 people. That's not a good ratio. One to 100, it ain't a great ratio for a flight where everyone's smashing like 10 beers an hour because they're just gearing up for Thailand, right? So there's a lot of pissing happening. The thing, the mistake that I made, I was like, yeah, I hadn't, I've been so busy. I was so busy leading up to to Thailand that the day before, as I said, I didn't eat, right? Which means I also didn't shit. And then I wake up the next morning, I'm trying to pack. I'm like, oh, you know, it took me like 10 minutes to put a tambourine in my bag. So I was like, I'm running late. So I leave and I didn't even think about attending to that business before I left. I get to the airport, I'm loving it, having a couple of beers at the airport, as you do, having a palmer, and then... Bloody hell. <laughs> oh, and shout out to the dude I met at the airport, by the way. Uh, I forgot your name, but uh, very lovely guy. Served us, served us at the airport. Anyway, uh, he listens to the podcast. That's why I'm doing a shout out, because I know he's going to hear it. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Yeah, so I, 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 here's what I'm trying to dance around the poo talk, but I can't because I'm talking about me doing a poo on the plane. Guys, you're going to have to indulge a bit of poo chat. 
for me to get through this and then we'll never talk about it again on the podcast, right? So I didn't shit at the airport. I didn't shit on... So it got to the plane and I went, oh no. This has been brewing for about over 24 hours now and it's not going to last another nine. I wait three hours into the flight. I'm like, I can hold it. Believe in yourself. Doing all the things where you stretch out your stomach, undo a pants button, you know, go for occasional walks up the aisle going, I don't know any shit. I don't know any shit. And by the end, I'm like, I can't ignore this cramp for any longer. (laughs) So I was like, I gotta go. So I queue up to the toilet and I don't know everyone else is going to piss. As you would, I've never been in this situation. I've never even considered it doing, doing it on a plane. And not uh, mainly because the toilets scare me when they flush. It scares everyone. If you're not scared by a plane seat toilet, you're a fucking maniac, all right? Because you, you know why? Because you press it and you're like, when's it going to go? <laughs> Sounds like like the, the toilet is just being gagged. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if you're not scared by that shit, you're an idiot. So I'm, like, I'm lining up and there's... A 40-year-old mum behind me with kids. She's lining up with her two kids. The kid's like, I'm busting a pee. And I was like, uh, and I was like, oh, you guys go first. And she's like, oh, no, trust me. You don't want to follow these guys. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, no, trust me. You don't want to follow whatever the fuck I'm about to do. Because they say, this is coming thick and fast. (laughs) And she's like, no, no, you go in. And I was like, no, 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 I insist. And she goes, No, 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 you were here first. I'm not teaching my kids. She got like really serious. She's like, I'm not teaching my kids. The pushing in line is okay. And I'm like, trust me, you should go first. I'm about to fucking annihilate whatever, whatever's about to happen in there. I'm going to come out a changed person, whether it's for the better or for the worse. It's going to be for the worse. All right, and your kids are gonna die, and I'm gonna be responsible. Oh, three kids suffocate on on jet on jet star flight to Thailand. Comedian Luke Kidgel refused to make statement. <laughs> That's what the headline's gonna read. All right, uh, and I was like, no, 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 you go for anyway. So she's like, I was like, fine, I'm gonna shit myself if I keep arguing with this woman. So I went in there. And I have never tried to do a speedier poop in my life. And guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know there's a lot of girls who listen to this podcast. I'm sorry. And even the guys who might be, you know, if you're eating right now, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just everyone does it, all right? Just indulge me for a sec because I need to describe how alone I felt. This is therapy, all right? This is, sorry, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube and the camera's wonky. Uh, I'm currently got it up on, I've got... A little chair on a coffee table with a book and then my passport is tilting the camera up so it's a little bit wonky but anyway I'm in there I'm giving it a go and I've never tried to be so quick in my life I felt violated by the toilet and I all I'm gonna say is I'll skip over it but I had to flush three times three times and I still don't know I still I didn't want to even check after the third flush if there was a skid mark you know why? Because this whole fucking plane trip to Thailand is one big skid mark on society. I'm like, if anything, I've given this plane trip what it deserves. If anything, I'm preparing that. I, I went to Bangalore Road the first day we got here, and that whole street is a fucking skid mark, all right? I was like, if this lady can't handle me at my worst, she can't handle Thailand at, her be- at its best, right? <laughs> So I was like, fuck it. Uh, and I just legged it. And then there's, it's the worst when there's still another four hours on the flight. Every time I went up to pee after that, I was so horrified to make eye contact with the woman and her kids. Because I know she went in there and I know she went, holy shit, I should have let my kids go first. Now I'm going to teach them that pushing in is okay. Anyway, so that, that's the thing that happened. So it really, it wasn't a great start to the trip. And I was like, this is supposed to be a holiday. I've just violated myself, and then I've almost missed my flight. What a start. And then uh, the first day we got here, we went to Bangalore Road to watch Melbourne, uh, my AFL football team, play in the finals at an Aussie pub. So within 18 hours of being here, in a new world, no, not a new world, in a new country, uh, I was like, a whole new world. Anyway, uh, no, new country. I am, instead of experiencing the culture, some people go out straight to see the big Buddha. 
Oh, they might go to a little night market, experience some local cuisine. I was like, where? I googled. I got into my hotel room and I was like, Siri, where's the nearest Australian bar? Beep. Go home, fuckhead. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. <laughs> but I was like, yep. Yeah. She's like, the nearest Australian bar is in like this one. And I was like, sweet. It's called Aussie Bar. It was a sick bar. We went there. The D's got up. I'm wearing my Melbourne singlet in an Australian bar with like a hundred other Australians. We're all high-fiving. Everyone's going for the Ds. I'm the fucking king at this point because I've got like my Melbourne top on and Melbourne are winning. I've got a tambourine every time they get a goal. I'm banging on the fucking tambourine. Everyone's like, why did you bring the tambourine? And I'm like, why not? And everyone's like, yes, because they're all fucking Australians and they all get it. That's the thing. People over here, the, the locals, they're like, oh, well, what's up with the tambourine? And I'm like, oh, I just like, I, I always have my tambourine on me because uh, what about if you guys need some percussion? And they're like, why would you need percussion? And I'm like, mm, you don't understand me and I just leave. <laughs> but every Australian, if you go, yeah, yeah, like I've got this because what about if they need percussion? They go, oh yeah, of course. Make sure you have it on you at all times. And, and they feel ridiculous. One guy was like, oh mate, should have told me. I would have bought me maracas. And I was like, well, why didn't you? He's like, oh, I don't know. The bloody, the ball. <laughs> he just started going off. He had four teeth. It was hard to understand. <clears throat> But uh, yeah, the, the Australian bar was sick, man. And then we like, so, so we left Bangalore Road at, at night time. And if you don't know, Bangalore Road's the road where you get ladyboys and ping pong shows, okay? So every, you're walking down the street. And if you've ever been like flyered at the Melbourne Comedy Festival, or like, you know, you think it's annoying when those charity people go like, oh, do you want it tonight? You have never seen, I felt like a, like a hot girl, man. Everyone wanted to talk to me, all right? I felt, you know what it is? <laughs> I felt like, uh, <laughs> I felt like Elmo on Sesame Street. I was just walking down and everyone wanted to talk to me. Everyone's like, hey, Elmo. And I'm like, hey. And instead of saying, hey, Elmo, they go, ping pong, ping pong, ping pong. And I'm like, nah, nah, nah. And, uh, but as they're showing you the ping pong show menu, if you guys think, Lewis Spears has a comedy bit about this, right? But uh, I'll just like briefly explain it. If you guys think that you know what a ping pong show is, it's not. That's not what you... Whatever you think a ping pong show is, is no, it's not girls shooting ping pongs out. All right? That would be awesome. That would be like the Olympics, but just out of their vaginas. But it's... They show you the menu, and they show you... The, on the menu is a list of things that the girls will put in their vagina. And it's fucking horrible. It's not funny at all, right? But I was like, man, I need to get a look. I was just so intrigued. I was like, this is fucking insane. And every time they'd show me a menu, I'd quickly try... Because I didn't want to, like, stick around and read it. Because then they'll, they'll literally push you in. So I kept walking at all times. But I'm, like, scanning the menu. These are some of the things I saw. These are some of the things that are going up, up people in Thailand. Mouth show. Uh, fire show. Fire. Fire. F fire? Fire. Uh, I saw lizard show. Uh, seahorse. I swear I saw Segway. I was reading one and I was like, I saw Segway show. And I was like, to her, I think I just saw Segway show. She's like, there's no way you could fit a Segway. I'm like, I know. And I almost, I was like, oh man, I almost fucking want to see. Like, <laughs> if you, what a Segway show is. It'd probably just be people like doing Segway tricks. I don't know. But I was like, no way. So obviously we didn't go to that. If you go do that shit here, you're a horrible human putting it out there. Um, it's exploitation. It's gross. Um... So yeah, we went to Bangalore Road. That was a skid mark. Um, what about oh and the, oh the, before we move on from toilet chat, toilet chat completely. The toilet sitch here, insane. Uh, if you've never been to Thailand before, they got a hose next to the toilet, and at first you're like, oh that hose is for cleaning the toilet. As someone who's never uh, sprinkled my asshole, no, not even jetted my asshole with cold water before, my first thought wasn't. Oh, that's probably to jet your asshole with cold water. Uh, I later found out it was because there's little signs next to all the toilets here that say, don't flush toilet paper, uh, put that in the bin. You spray your butt. Oh, it doesn't say this exactly, but you're supposed to spray your back area, your backside, when you do a shit, uh, with water, and then you dry it with the paper and put it in the bin. Now, I'm not an animal. I've still been flushing some stuff. I'm not... You know what I mean? You're not... If you're if you're putting your poo paper, yuck. Okay, this 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 public toilets here are, are disgusting. I'll be honest. Like they're just 
there's people doing some outrageous things in there. Where I'm just, I can't even comprehend how you, and I know it's Australians as well. They come over here and I'm like, you've just forgotten where you are. All right, just because you're here, it doesn't mean you start, take take care of yourself a bit better. I'll, I'll go and show you guys. For everyone watching the uh, video, I'll, I'll, I'll go and show you just in a sec what the toilet stitch is like. Uh, but before I do, I want to say, you, well, you'd expect if there was a hose to wash your bum with, that it'd be warm, gentle stream, you know, just lo just powerful enough to, to get it, to, you know, to get the job done, but not quite forceful enough to literally tear you a new asshole. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's go check it out. For those listening, uh, which is most of you, uh, you'll be out of here. I'm just walking to the uh, bathroom now. And by the way, we're in an open plan bathroom. So every time I shit, there's no door. And I feel like I'm pooping in the middle of our, of our room. Anyway, so we're in the bathroom now. Uh, there's, there's the, okay, so next to the toilet, boom, there's your hose, okay? Uh, it looks like for those listening, um, in your shower, some shower heads come out. And uh, you can wash yourself with the shower head. It looks like that, right? And it's got a little trigger on it. And this is okay. I'm shooting it into the toilet in three, two, one, so you guys can hear the level of pressure that this has been hitting buttholes with. Three, two, one. What the hell? That's that's what my dad uses to wash the car. You know those Karcher things that. Jesus Christ, that's, that's, that's what, look, I, I'll be honest, I've given it, I've given it about three goes, I reckon, and, um, yeah, it's not for me, it's just not, I mean, I, I was open to it, uh, it's not a pleasurable thing, um, and, but it makes sense, it, there's a little part of it that I'm like, man, it makes sense, particularly for guys who, uh, you know, have a, generally a, you know, a bit, a bit more business happening back there in the, in the hair department. Um, and yeah, if, if you were like, if you got bird shit in your hair, you're not going to wipe it out with a little cloth, are you? You're going to wash that. And so there's, there's parts of it of me that go, yeah, this makes sense. But there's other parts that go, oh, it feels like I'm sticking a garden hose up my butthole and turning it on full. So usually that part of my brain takes over and I go, not for me. But, um, bloody interesting to try. See, that, this is the problem with me being overseas is other people, like, when they go overseas, they think culture... Well, they... Well, culture... <laughs> hang on. They perceive culture as, like, all oh, the local cuisine and, you know, all the touristy things you can do. Oh, go to some temples and stuff. And that's all great. But I love experiencing just shit that, that I'm like, this is insane. And no one else is... This is this should be on the brochure. If it was up to me, these things would be on the brochure. Firstly, Milo in a can. They serve Milo in a can. Chocolate milk in a, in a can. Tin can. Unbelievable. Chocolate Mentos. Chocolate Mentos over here. Everyone's having it. Chocolate Mentos. Unbelievable. These are the types of cultural things that... Are, will stick with me from Thailand. Yeah, we went and saw this big Buddha. It was great. You know, saw a monk. That was cool. But chocolate Mentos? Pfft, get out of here. <laughs> it's unreal. Uh, what are, oh, I spent half an hour the other night watching their version of Funniest Home Videos. It was unbelievable. I've, I've never, honestly, can say I've, I've never laughed so much at a television show in my life. I, well, they, I don't even know. What, they were speaking Indonesian, I think. I still, I still don't know, after a week of being here, what language they speak. Is it Indonesian? That's so ignorant of me. I have no idea. Is there a Thailand language? I think it's just Indonesian. I've got no idea. I don't even know right now. I don't even know if I'm in Asia or Indonesia. Couldn't tell you. Why? Because I'm ignorant. And I didn't look it up before I left. And I probably won't. Alright, you guys want to tell me during the week? That'd be great. I've been calling... Phuket, Phuket. Why? Because Pu got. Because I can't help myself. My brain sees a word starting with P and goes mispronounce it, and I do. I've been like, oh, yeah, how, how much will the cab cost to get to Phuket? And all the locals are like, what? What's Phuket? 
Do you mean Phuket? And I've been like, yep. Phuket. Pew, pew, pew. Like it's a fucking laser. Oh, I'm an idiot. But uh, yeah, I've been loving the culture here. Funny Stone videos in Indonesian. Pfft, amazing. Top notch television. Uh, I've been. What else have I been loving? That's that's really got my eye. I don't know. I've been loving doing all the classic white people shit. Just buying stuff. Can come back with like these dumb hats, like three pairs of fucking one dollar Ray Bans. Uh, you know, bloody T-shirts. Just you know, you name it, I bought it. You know what I mean? My suitcase. I I didn't really bring many clothes because I always buy more all my clothes over there. If I if I run out of T-shirts, I'll go buy one. All right. Why? Because it's dollar, and it will be still be better than any t-shirt I own. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, it's been super fun. Uh, to be honest, I just needed a break from it all. I really did. I needed. Uh, I, I was getting very overwhelmed. Uh, I was actually stressed for the first time, and because uh, you know, I did say it like a few months ago, I was like, "Yeah, I took a break after my tour," but I was like, "That was like me just slowing down." Me going like, oh, I'll just pack a few merch things today and I'll do a bit of writing and I'll just edit and a video at night. But that's like a light day, you know what I mean? That was like me having a break. But Emily's like, you need to stop. You need to just, like literally, I need, if it, that's what, that's why we booked a holiday overseas. She's like, you need to literally go nine hours away or you're not going to stop. And I was like, you, yeah. You're right, and and it was great. To be honest, uh, I didn't really do. I like wrote down little funny ideas and stuff that could be in my stand-up show, and uh, this is the podcast is the first thing I've done uh, in a while. So it's you know like a week now. So it's it's been super fun actually having a break, and now I feel like I'm ready to go till the end of the year. I feel like I'm just gonna fucking gun it with content all the way to the end of the year. So then next year's tour is just a beast, and uh, it's gonna be the biggest shit ever. So that's, that's the plan. I just needed like a week to be like, yum, and have some chocolate Mentos. Uh, so yeah, I'm all relaxed now, and I'm uh, about to head home uh, later tonight. And uh, yeah, it should be great. Um, I've got a few more things to talk about. I'm just going to look at my notes here for the podcast. I've been writing down shit during the week that's been blowing my mind here. Where is it? Uh, um, um, where is Okay, here we go. Uh, so we almost missed that flight. Oh, yeah. It, you know how I was just talking about everything's fake in Thailand. The Ray-Bans, the Ralph Lauren tops, Tommy Hill figures, you name it, the Gucci, it's all fake, right? To the point, even their celebrities are fake. <laughs> I've been getting Thailand celeb spots all week. I, I, I've been killing it with celeb spots. Yeah, they're not the real celebs, they're the, but so many doppelgangers at our resort. I saw Macklemore at the airport. He ended up being on our flight. He was one of the people gunning it down. Do you know how sick it was running through an airport with Macklemore and me just in my head going, bum, 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 down, down. I'm just looking at him. I'm like, fuck, man, it's Macklemore, but not. Uh, I saw Thailand version of Jim Jeffries. Uh, it was like a budget Jim Jeffries. I would say it was like a Jim Jeffries back in his older days. Uh, but then I feel like Jim looks a lot better these days. Uh, but I saw like an older kind of first, you know, his first special before the gun control bit, Jim Jeffries. And I also saw a Thailand version of Paddy Newton. Actually, it wasn't that good. It was more like a, a barley Paddy Newton, which is uh, Bert Newton's wife. She's been uh, at the buffet breakfast every morning and I've been like, Paddy, and she's like, that's not my name. Uh, but yeah, Thailand's been great for the, for the celeb spots. Um, I regret not getting a picture with Macklemore. I just regret not going, hey man, I love your stuff, and just him going, what? I'm not, who Who do you think I am? <laughs> I really regret it. That's, you know, I don't, I don't have many regrets from this trip. You know, I've taken my tambourine with me everywhere. Uh, I, I have no regrets, but not getting a picture with budget Thailand Macklemore, that'll haunt me for the rest of my life. Um, what else? Oh! First thing I noticed when we got out of the plane here, other than it's hot and I was wearing trackies like an idiot, I was like, to the, I was so naive, man. I was like, how hot can it be? How, how, everyone's like, oh, it's pretty humid, man. You shouldn't wear trackies on the flight. And I'm like, that's cold as fuck in Melbourne. I'm wearing trackies at the airport. I've become that guy now. I'm like, I feel like Justin Bieber. I was walking around the airport wearing trackies. I'm like, I, I didn't give a fuck. I wasn't even self-conscious. I was like, yeah, whatever. Cool, man. 
I'm wearing trackers at the airport. Sue me. All right, and they're not even good trackies as well. They were like cotton on bloody $20 trackies. <laughs> um, anyway, so I was wearing trackies on the way here. Get off the plane, and uh, it was 30 degrees. I'm wearing trackies. I did that douchey thing where, you see like European people do it all the time. They just pull their trackies up, and they're like, they're shorts now. I just did that shit on the taxi on the way home, because I was like, I don't care. I'm in Thailand. Don't know anyone here. All right. Never going to see these people again. And uh, the first thing I noticed when we were in the car, the best invention ever. It blew my mind when I went to Brisbane and Brisbane do it with their walking uh, traffic lights, crossings. They have a countdown timer, right? People in Brisbane, I think Perth have some as well, maybe Adelaide. Melbourne and Sydney don't, and I don't know why. Uh, they have a countdown clock that says how much time left you've got to cross. Thailand saw that and went, we'll do you one better. Will shit on whatever you got. They got a countdown clock for their actual traffic lights when you drive. So when you're driving through a green light, it says how many seconds of green light you have left. That is genius. That's incredible. It was like 24 seconds left. So you know, if you're 100 meters away and it says 10 seconds, you know you can gun it and still make it. All right. And and not even that, they have a countdown timer for how much longer you have to wait on a red light. So one time it was like, you have 86 seconds, 85, 83, till the light's going to turn green. So good if you're running late. You text your boss, going to be 84 seconds, mate, if, if he's right across the road. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's so good, man. Uh, that, that blew my mind. I was like, everywhere needs that. There'd be so much less uh, people running red lights because you just know how much time you got left. People are like, oh, is it gonna go? Fuck it, I'll just go. And you wouldn't need red light cameras because people would be like, oh, I got 15 seconds, it's fine. Oh, I got four seconds, I'll stop, I'll stop. I've only got four seconds, I'm not gonna make that. Genius. Uh, another thing, speed limits here, optional. You call it a red light, they call it an option. You call it 50 kilometers an hour, they're like, what? You mean 100 on a little motorbike? Just like a family of 10 stacked up like a pile of Jenga on a motorbike with a double mattress on the back. Just... <laughs> I've seen like kids, they just literally prop kids up on their little motorbikes. 100 kilometers, kids not wearing a helmet, down the freeway. Incredible. And I still haven't worked out if their speed signs are kilometers per hour or miles per hour. Because it just says 50, but they're all going 100. And I just don't know if the speedometers in their car are... I think the speedometers are, are kilometers per hour, but their speed signs are miles per hour. It's really confusing. But they all just speed anyway. And it's actually a system that works. In Australia, if we all sped, it would actually be safe. It, the system works if everyone does it. If everyone's going 150 zone, that's great. It's not ideal, but it's it's no one was crashing, right? It only takes one person to not go 100 kilometers, then it's dangerous. So in Australia, let's all just start speeding. I've never sped before, never got a speeding ticket. I don't speed. But if we all did it, right, then it will be safe as. But it's just one person. You know, there'll be one person who's like, no, I'm not going to do it. Oh, you fucked it for everyone. Because it works, man. <laughs> I should, probably shouldn't be encouraging it, but it's good. Um, and what else have I got? Oh, yeah. This is like just the thought I had. I was like, I realize that you don't have to do anything ever. If that makes sense. I was like, man, this is so weird. Like, I just like had to tell the radio station. I was like, oh yeah, like I'm just going to go to Thailand. They're like, yeah, cool. Like, you, whatever. Like, we're not contracted there or anything. So like, yeah, we don't care. Like, we haven't contracted you. So you go do whatever you want. We're like, sweet. And I was like, man... I pretty much am unemployed. Like, I only work there once a week. I mean, yeah, we have to go on for meetings and stuff, but I'm like, I even if I wasn't working at the radio station, I would probably make enough money just off comedy. And I was like, man, what about if I wasn't doing comedy? I had to have that thought. And I was like, what have I been doing? I'm like, I've been doing nothing, and no one would stop me. You don't, you don't have to, you don't even have to live off the doll. If you have family money, right? If you have enough money to live for the rest of your life, you could technically graduate and just do nothing for the rest of your life. You could sit in bed and just go for walks, go see movies, watch TV. You could, tech, 
Like, a thing in society, it's like, you got to get a job, you got to this. And it's like, if you had money, you could do... I've never even thought about that before. Is this just me? I've never had that thought where I'm like, you don't have to do anything. The government's not going to be like, you got to do something. Will they? I don't think you have to do anything. You can just fucking do that. That's crazy to me. I just had this thought during the week when I was just doing nothing by the pool and I was like, I don't have to do... Like, I could do this all the time if I had an infinite money piled up from, I don't know, my, my great, great rich ancestors, which I don't have. But I was like, if I did, you could technically do nothing. I'm sure there's people out there who have literally do nothing, who have never got a job, have no desire to get a job, because I don't need one. And that's, that'd be weird. That'd be the weirdest life. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. I was just, that just blew my mind this week when I was like, you don't have to do anything. And I was like, Poof. I think I was drunk. I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> we've had like free, free alcohol, free. There's this for, for my week. I've like, I think I'm putting like four kilos. We have had a buffet breakfast, lunch and dinner all paid for unlimited food. And free alcohol between 11am and 11pm. That's dangerous. That's dangerous for anyone. Alright? I love a beer. I love two beers. I love ten beers. Alright? When I'm, when I'm on a break, I'm on a break. And em, Emily loves a beer. We all, we all love beers. But we're not talking beers. We're talking cocktails, spirits, all for free. It's been a big week. So that's probably why that explains that thought. Just like 10 beers deep next to a pool and I'm like, you don't have to do anything ever. And I'm like, write that shit down. Other people need to know. <laughs> Guys, I think that's almost the end of the podcast. I really hope you've enjoyed it. It uh, has been, this officially has been the widest episode of all time. I'm trying to look out if, if I've missed anything. Uh, yesterday I went to these awesome islands. I uh, went snorkeling. Okay, can we all agree snorkeling sucks? Can I put it out there? If anyone's like, no, nah, snorkeling's great. Nah, it's, good. it's fine if your snorkel fucking works. I've never had a snorkel where no water seeped in. I can breathe correctly. I'm not breathing in seawater. I don't have to go up every 10 seconds and go... <gasps> and then like get the water and go... <sighs> and blow all, the <laughs> blow all the water out. Can we agree that snorkeling, as a society, we need to stop glorifying... Snorkeling, like it's this, like it, it was like a thing. It was on the brochure. It was like, oh, and and deep, you know, like clear blue deep sea snorkeling. And I was like, yeah, there was heaps of fish. I accidentally kicked a fish yesterday. That was mean. It couldn't help it. There was like literally hundreds around me, and these fish didn't give a fuck. They were just swimming like literally into your hands and shit. And you're like, oh, stop! I don't want to touch you, but like, sorry, sorry, I shouldn't be here. Sorry, sorry. And I just, I felt it, and there was this kind of big one behind me, and I did like one big breaststroke kick, and I felt myself kicking in the face. I quickly turned around, and there was this fish just floating in the water. It goes like, oh, and I was like, holy fuck, I've killed a fish. I've killed a fish. I've come to this place. I'm being a piece of shit human. I'm in there. It's not my home. It's in their home. This is where they live, and I've just kicked in in the face, and I've killed a fish. So I'm having a panic attack. I can't breathe because this bloody... Snorkel shit, there's snorkel juice in my, which is seawater. Snorkel juice all up in my eyes and my mouth, and I was like, I've killed a fish! And it would look like I was crying because I was just splattering to Emily. I was like, I think I've killed a fish! I think I've killed a fish! And she's like, What? And I'm like, I've killed a fish! <laughs> and then I turn around and I was like, kept watching this fish, and I was like, Oh no, it's dead, it's dead. And then all of a sudden it just went, Whoop! And swam away. And I was like, Man, I think I briefly, you know what I think? I think I winded a fish. <laughs> I think that's what happened. I winded a fish. It just went... And then floated for a bit. And then just went... I mean, fish don't breathe, but its gills went... I winded a fish. I never thought I would say that. That's probably the best thing I did in Thailand. Everyone's like, how was your trip? Yeah, not bad, mate. Kicked a fish. Uh, bloody... <laughs> it was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> kicked a fish, went to an Aussie bar, and... Uh, had a few beers. That's pretty much a trip to Thailand, if you ever ask me. Like, if anyone ever comes back from Thailand, I go, how was it? And they go, yeah, mate, it was good. I'm like, did you kick a fish? And they go, nah. And you go, get back on the plane and fucking finish off your holiday then. Because if you haven't kicked a fish, you haven't done Thailand. Uh, 
Yeah, snorkeling, not good. Can we, I think we can all stop as a society and being like, snorkeling's the best. Uh, we've done the thing as well, where I never wanted to be this person on a holiday, because it's just Emily and I here. We've accidentally fallen into the trap of making couple friends in our resort. I, I still don't know their name, so, so Emily probably does. I, I don't give a shit. But like, there's, there's people now that every morning at the buffet you go, haha. <laughs> Hey, yep, yeah, we, yes, we did go on a boat. We snorkeled together yesterday. Ha ha, great, awesome, all right, yep, enjoy your bacon. And then later on that night, and the only time I'm ever willing to talk to them is when I'm like eight beers deep and we're sitting on a beach at night time. Like last night, it was like 30 degrees, sitting on a well-lit beach. It was awesome, having drinks. And then like these people started talking to us and I was like, yeah, that's great. We just talked to some people. They were from uh, Britain. They'd just come over here from the UK. and the, but, but they lived in Sydney. And then, you know, I'm uh, chatting away. And they go, oh, do you in Sydney much? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was telling them I could do a bit of comedy. So I'm like, yeah, I do shows there. And we're bonding over this mutual place that we've both been to in Manly. And they're like, oh, we should catch up when you go. And then I just draw the line. And I'm like, Rrr. that's the line. We shouldn't catch up. Why? Because we're not friends. We're holiday friends. We're chatting on a beach in Thailand. You're not my mate. Huh? You're not my mate. Oh, trying to get in my Facebook friends, are ya? Don't even know your name. You're nice. I'm enjoying your company. We're cheersing a couple of times. You know, he's gone. He actually did. He was a pretty nice guy. He's like, he's like, Mate, are you right for a beer? And I was like, yeah, mate, get me one. Like, I'll get you the next one. You know, doing a bit of that. But as soon as you go, we should catch up when you come to Manly. Hey, man. No, we shouldn't. Why? Because I. not only am I very rarely in Manly. We've only been there three times ever. But when I'm there, we're not catching up. Why? Because we're not in Thailand having beers on the beach. That's when we're friends. We're not friends. We're not manly friends. We're Thailand friends. Maybe you know what would have been less weird? Him going next year. We should both reschedule on a holiday. Come back to this exact spot and drink beers next year. I would have been like, yes, because we're Thailand friends. This guy gets it. I would be more than happy to catch up with you then. Because you know what? I really did enjoy his company. Maybe I should have become friends with him, guys. I think I really liked him. He looked a bit like Carl Drogo uh, in Aquaman. Uh, so it was pretty cool. Uh, and. And, and he said that I look like everyone, which I do. Uh, and yeah, so we really bonded over that. He's like, oh, everyone says I look like Carl Drogo. I'm like, everyone says I look like fucking all these people. And he's like, oh, you fuck, you do. You, you look like him. And I'm like, that's a mirror. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was great fun. So yeah, I, at this end of the podcast, I've had uh, an awesome trip. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed the Memoirs of a White Guy Thailand episode. Uh, I'll be back on Monday, so literally in two days if you're listening to it on the day it comes out, um, with all the updates from the Osh cast. The hunt for Osh is still very much on. I've just been uh, really preoccupied. Now that I'm back from Thailand, I'm going to contact the management again. I've got lots of updates, whereas I've actually got... There's updates. You guys have been contacting him. Uh, make sure if you're going to contact Osha. Um, Gunsberg. By the way, if you're new to the podcast, welcome. We're trying to get Osha Gunsberg, Australian reality TV host from The Bachelor, formerly Andrew G of Australian Idol, on the podcast. Because why? Because he's the most beloved Australian television host of all time. And uh, yeah, we're trying to get him on the podcast. So if, you wanna, if you're going to contact him on social media, I urge you just to leave a comment on one of his things. And you know what's funny? Everyone's been so polite. I've read some that are like, I've been like, yeah, make sure to be really polite. People are like going balls deep in the politeness. I saw one that was like, greetings, Osher Gunsberg. Uh, how do you do? Great. Firstly, love your work. It was just like the most polite shit ever. And at the end it was like, sincerely, and whatever the guy's name was. And I've seen ones like, kind regards, Sam. <laughs> so if you're going to leave a comment, do it in the most respectful manner of all time. Because that's the way we want to treat Osh. We want Osh to come on this podcast feel at home, and feel like a king. Guys, that is the end of the podcast. I've said it about three times now. This is Luke and the Tambourine signing off. I really hope I haven't missed anything from Thailand. If I have, I'll talk about it on Monday. Ladies and gentlemen, see ya! That was the worst sign off ever. I'm regretting that. I want to quit comedy. See ya! What the fuck is that? Alright, I'm going to go.
See ya. That wasn't enough. Hang on. Bye! Not too loud. Alright, probably just woke up the neighbours. Uh, nah, I'm gonna go. See ya. <laughs>